Now let us add trade in the specific factors model. So we are saying that instead of comparing two economies, we are saying that we are going to focus on home and rest of the world. So we are actually looking only at the home and uh, we are assuming that they are facing the world price. That's simple. So let us start with a position that uh, there is no, what do you call trade, which is happening. So you have the relative demand curve and you also have the relative supply curve, right? You also have the relative supply curve. So if no trade is happening, then economy is sitting at point one with the, the equilibrium relative price in otaki is PC by PF and the equilibrium uh, relative quantity of cloth is this. So you have PC by PF one, and here you have QC by QF1. I'm mainly interested in PC by PF1. Okay. Now, supposedly trade happens. So this is otaki. This point is otaki, no trade. Otaki. Now suppose trade happens. And when the trade happens, the relative supply curve for the world happens to be this, let us say. Relative supply curve for the world happens to be this. And we are saying that the relative supply curve of the world is different from relative supply curve of the home. And this is quite possible. That other countries can have a different relative supply curve. The reason being that they can face different technology. Their technologies could be different. differences in technology or other countries can have a different resource endowment. So some country might have a more land, some other country might have more capital, labor, whatsoever. So differences or differences in resource endowments. But we are making one very general assumption that, uh, that there are no differences in the relative demand across the countries. So that is same. Relative demand curve for the home and the relative demand curve for the world is same. This is just an assumption. This is just an assumption, right? And uh, in this example, the world relative price, world relative price means the, the, the price which you're going to get when you open up for the trade. So the other one very important thing is that uh, producers are indifferent whom they are supplying to, whether they are supplying it to uh, world or they're supplying it to home because there is only one relative demand curve. So, but that is just an assumption. That is just an assumption, right? And in this example, when the trade is happening, then what happens is that uh, your relative price of cloth increases. Relative price of cloth increases to PC by PF2. So when the country has opened up for the trade, the relative price of the cloth has increased. In this, in this example, the world relative price of cloth happens to be higher happens to be higher. So opening up to trade has led to the changes in the home's relative price also. Uh, you can just write this line also that opening up to trade leads to a changes in home's relative price. It has increased. It has increased one thing. Uh, now the question which arises is this. So when the relative price of the cloth has increased, relative price of the cloth has increased in the economy, 
then what is going to happen? Economy is going to produce more of what? Cloth or food? So you have the cloth and food here and the relative price of the cloth has increased. So don't you think that uh, there is an incentive for the economy to produce more cloth? So economy will be producing more cloth. When the opening up of the trade has increased the relative price of the cloth. The other question which is going to arise, how will the consumers are going to respond? Cloth has become little expensive. So the consumers are going to say, fine, we will go for food. right? So consumers are going to respond uh, to the higher relative price of cloth by demanding more of food. So please write consumers. Respond. To a higher. Relative price of cloth. by demanding more food, by demanding more food, right? So in, in the home country, when the relative price of the cloth has increased, what is it that home country is going to export? Home country is going to produce more cloth and home country is going to produce cloth, sorry, export cloth. And, uh, since home country is getting more and more specialized in the production of cloth and the relative price of cloth has increased in the home country, consumers are responding it by demanding more of food and home country is not producing food, not producing food as in, or it is producing less of food. So we're not saying complete specialization. So in this case, home country would have to depend upon the foreign country or the rest of the world for its food demand. So it is going to import food. So it is good to import, right? So it's a very small case what we have done when there is a trade in the specific factors model. Now in the next recording, we're going to talk and we're going to link this with the distribution of income in the economy. You know this, opening of the trade has led to the change in the relative price. Yes, it is. It can increase, it can decrease depending on the position of the relative supply curve. So in our example, we have shown the relative supply curve is like this and hence opening up of the trade, opening up to trade has increased the relative price of the cloth. When the relative price of the cloth has increased, it means that there are changes in the relative price in the home country. And the changes in the relative price in the home country has the, has the direct effect on the specific factors. We have done in the last recording what is going to happen to the capital owners what is going to happen to the landowners and the ambiguous case for the labor. We're going to link this with the gains from trade due to the changes in the relative price in the specific factors that we'll be doing in the next recording. Thank you, Vita.